hi welcome thank you for tuning in to simtech channel so this is part two where we're going to discuss the other three methods of how to generate a pwm signal using an arduino board so on part one we saw the first method on our list which was the analog write method so you basically have to call the function analog write and all you have to do in there is to basically pass the pin number right make sure the pin is a pwm enable pin and also the duty circle that you have to work out as we are doing it here with the potentiometer attach on one of the analog pins right so make sure you watch part one of this tutorial so you can see how this simple code snippet was explained so by the end of this tutorial we're going to cover the other three methods that you can generate a pwm signal make sure you stay tuned now without any further ado let's look at the second method on our list which is the bit banging method now this method is implemented by simply turning the bit off and delaying for a couple of milliseconds and then later on turning the bit on again and delaying for a couple of milliseconds now the frequency of this pwm signal that will be produced by turning the pin on and off and on is determined by how long you delay 200 millisecond delay on low 200 millisecond delay on high now if you want to know the frequency of this signal right now here you simply have to do by dividing the time period now remember you got 200 off 200 on which basically give you a period of 400 milliseconds now if you take one you divide it by 400 millisecond it's going to give you 2.5 now without delay let's go ahead and load this into our arduino board and observe the pwm signal from this sketch right so the script is done uploading and we can clearly see we've got a frequency of 2.5 hers is displaying on our lcd display there now do we have the same frequency here on the oscilloscope so all we have to do here is basically to change the time division okay so that we can be able to read this very very slow frequency of uh, what's that 2.5 hertz that we calculated that we can also see on our lcd display there there we go there we go it's now available so we can see there is a frequency of 2.479 hertz now the period is 400 milliseconds and the positive width is 200 milliseconds so the negative width is exactly the same so we can indeed try to display it here so let's uh, display the negative width on our screen there we go so negative width 200 millisecond positive width 200 milliseconds so it gives us a period of 400 milliseconds now remember this one you cannot change the duty circle because it's a bit banging uh, uh, pwm signal or if you want to change the duty circle here you need to shorten the time in which you are turning the pin on and off let's go ahead and try to achieve that now 200 200 basically mean we are only 50 percent duty circle so if we want to change this to like a 70 30 percent duty circle you know what you're going to do so let's try to change this here to 30 millisecond and this here we're going to change it to 70 millisecond now this is going to change the frequency of the pwm signal because now it's only a hundred millisecond period and 100 millisecond is basically 10 hertz so which means it's slightly faster but now we're gonna have a positive width of 70 millisecond and a negative width of 30 millisecond now let's go ahead and load this into our arduino board done uploading as you can see here on our oscilloscope we are getting a frequency of 9.6 that's about 10 hertz that we calculated okay and you can see that the positive width is 71 and the negative width is 32 milliseconds so that basically sums up what we did on our arduino script here and by the way if you know of any other method where you can generate a pwm signal using an arduino at mega 328 
let us know on the comment section and if you find this tutorial useful so far please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated now because these uh beat banging based pwm depend on how fast you are turning your pin on and off right so that basically must take account of any piece of code or script you are executing in between so if we want to speed up this frequency here we need to remove this line of code here that we are basically using to handle the lc display or you need to find a way in which you're not going to delay the cpu process while you are toggling your pins on and off so i'm going to go ahead and remove or comment out uh this script where i'm handling the lcd display i will comment it out and let's go ahead and reduce this delay to one millisecond so that we can get it to about 50 percent to the circle so we're going to put an on delay also to one millisecond now remember you can indeed change this delay function to the delay microsecond because the delay only on arduino here is a millisecond delay you can change it to the delay microsecond that's where you can increase the frequency too much faster now if we come here on to our oscilloscope here we can see that the frequency have changed and it's now 500 hertz because it's a two millisecond period and one divided by two millisecond is going to give you that 500 hertz frequency and the positive width and the negative width are both one millisecond as we've done on our code there so if you want to make this faster you can change it to a delay microsecond and you're going to get a much faster faster frequency with the bit banging pwm i've just changed the delay to the delay microseconds and with a 250 microsecond delay on each toggle so it's give me a total of 500 microseconds let's go ahead and load it and on our oscilloscope here we can see that we've got a change in the frequency of basically two kilohertz because that's what we get with the 500 microsecond of a period and that is 250 microsecond 250 microsecond for both the positive width and the negative width so this is it guys right so now we move on to the third method where you can generate a pwm signal with an arduino board right the next method on our list is the timer one method so you basically have to include the timer one library onto your arduino ide and much like the first method the analog write method this one is much very easy so you select your pin right and then you set the pin mode as an output then you do the initialization okay so you initialize the period remember the period is what define your frequency so here on my comment here i've got a hundred microseconds period that basically 10 kilohertz so which means at 50 microseconds you double the frequency that's 20 kilohertz and then ignore all these line of code here for the lcd and this part here is obviously for the duty circle because now remember this method you can control the duty circle much easily compared to the bit banging method where the duty circle is controlled by basically the time off and on delay right now here on the timer one dot pwm you pass your pin and the value of the port okay now the port value here is basically going to be your duty circle value now let's go ahead and load this uploading compiling and uploading right okay so now we can check on the oscilloscope here the frequency we're not getting anything yet we need to change our what you call it the time division we need to change the time division oops we're still not getting anything maybe we are on a wrong pin here okay let's uh let's have a look here um okay no we are right on pin nine 
oops, the duty circle is on 0%. That's probably uh, the problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the duty circle to 25. Oop, there we go. As soon as we change the duty circle, we are seeing our frequency. And we've got a very solid frequency of 20 kilohertz. As you can see, the period is 50 microseconds as we initialize it in our code. And we also have the positive width is at 30 and the negative width is at 19. Right? Does that make sense? Well, we've got a 60% duty circle here. Right, so basically this is how the timer one method works. So if we change here to 100 microseconds and we reload this again, into our Arduino board, we should be see a reduction in the frequency here of 10 kilohertz. As you can see there, the frequency changed to 10 kilohertz and the duty circle is standing at 58% there on the LCD screen. And here we've got the duty circle, the positive duty circle, positive width at about 59 and 60 microseconds. So it does make sense. So the timer one method seems to be a very solid method for all your project that you want to partake in using the Arduino board. Right, so now it's time to move on to the last method on our list. Right, so the next method, the fourth method on our list here is what is known as the fast PWM uh, method now in this fast pwm method you basically will be making use of your arduino uh, at mega 328 registers okay so now if you don't want to use the analog write method right and you don't want to use the bit banging method you don't want to use the timer one method and you want precise control of your pwm well then you need to get familiar with the Arduino at Mega328 data sheet. That is where you're going to start working with the registers. Now, two registers are particularly important to you. That will be your TCCR 2A register and the TCCR 2B register. That's the one you uh, choose the press color for your frequency. Now, this means you need to know what is a clock frequency of your microcontroller. Now, these at Mega328 that I use mostly on the Arduino Uno usually have a 16 megahertz frequency, but now you need to confirm that, okay? And once you know what it is, you can then come to this page 131 of the, the data sheet of the at Mega328, and you're going to find this table, right? Now, this table is very important to you because now you need to set the bits for your press color. Now, when you set... 111 on all these three bits here cs22 cs21 cs20 that basically you are choosing the bigger the biggest press color 1024 if you want to go to the eight press color that basically you must have 0 1 0 okay now once you load that in there then the next thing you have to do is obviously to set the value for your duty circle and that will go into the register ocr 2a Okay, and that's work with the TCCR2A register. Now, once all that is ready, you can then go ahead and load. Now, forget this script here. That is just for the LCD display. So, now I'm going to load this right now. And we should be able to see a frequency display on our oscilloscope here. Because we do not have a frequency right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and load it okay it's done uploading now what is going on here now it seems like mm, okay uh 56 percent duty circle here 56 percent duty circle but i am not getting a frequency i need to change to pin 11 there so let's go to pin 11 right as soon as i move to pin 11 i'm getting my frequency here as you can see, it's a 61 hertz frequency, okay? That's me because I'm choosing the biggest press color here because it's now giving me a 61 hertz frequency. Now, if I want a bigger frequency, I must change my 
prescalar value that basically mean you need to uh, work with this table i want to change the prescalar here so that i can increase my frequency from the 60 hertz frequency that i have here i want to change it to a smaller prescalar here okay that will be let's say i want to go to eight there that's zero one zero that basically mean i'm dividing my clock frequency by eight only okay so now i'm gonna change it by setting this bit to zero okay and this next bit also we're going to move it to zero okay then we're only going to have cs21 to be at one just as the table now let's go ahead and load this onto our arduino board and we should see a change in the frequency here there we go we've got a bigger frequency coming up here so now in order for us to read it we need to change the time division here let's change the time division so that we can be able to read this frequency there we go okay so that basically means a 7.8 kilohertz of frequency. Now we can still change the duty circle here. With our potentiometer, we can change the duty circle. As you can see. So this is it guys uh, for this tutorial. And uh, we've uh, covered the four most basic simple methods to generate a PWM signal using your Arduino board. So that is... Uh, the analog write method, the bit banging, the timer one method using the library, and the fast PWM mode where you can basically control your PWM with the registers yourself and get the value that you want. So thank you so much for watching. If you find this tutorial useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. Make sure you turn the notification for more tutorial of this nature. Until next time. Cheers.